This is Eddie Silva for the St. Louis Symphony blog. And this morning, we're showing a little bit of the inside of Dana Meyer's violin case. And you'll see, well, just as you think you should see, there's a violin, and there are bows, and then there's pictures. Dana, tell us about who, who's featured here. Well, in the Meyer's residence, birds are us. This here is Baby, our cockatiel, and he's just had a bath, so he's a little matted down, but he's still very adorable. And this, we actually have a budgie, but this is not him. This is a card that someone gave, and I imagine that maybe it's done with a computer or something, because I think no self-respecting uh, parakeet would allow clothes like that. One thing, one, one thing you probably can't pick up on the on the blog here is that, uh, and because there's a bow in the way, but but he he's wearing a pirate hat and a and and an eye patch and a scarf. <laughs> he's looking a little like Keith Richard. <laughs> and Dana, while we're here, um, you've introduced us to the to the birds um, and your instrument. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, I'm fortunate because it's a wonderful violin. It's made in 1757, and it's a Guadagnini. It's made in Milan, and I'm very fortunate to have it. And how long have you had it? Oh, I think probably 15 years now. So, so you're old friends now? Definitely old friends, yes. And what is it that you particularly love about, about this violin? Um, the kind of sound a Guadagnini makes the best way to describe it, I think, is this kind of a, a golden honey purring. Oh. Um, um, and this is not the only Guadagnini. There are actually four, well, now there are three Guadagninis in the, in the orchestra for sure. David Halen plays a Guadagnini, yes. and Heidi Harris plays a Guadagnini, and, um, and then me. Dana, tell us something special about the program this weekend. Okay. The program will be like stepping into a time machine that's set for the 1940s, because every piece was written in the 1940s. What is especially 1940s-ish about some of the works? Well, let's see, there are a couple things going on here. The Copeland has very strong uh, elements of jazz, and because, because it was written, it was commissioned by the famed uh, clarinet, jazz clarinetist Benny Goodman. And he paid $2,000 for Copeland to write this fantastic piece. The, the opening is very hauntingly beautiful. And, and then, then comes the jazzy parts. And apparently Copeland had to rewrite it quite a bit so that Goodman would be able to play it because I think as a jazz, it was some of the symphonic kind of writing was perhaps a little bit uncomfortable. But we have Scott Andrews playing it, and he can do it just fine. Oh, he, Scott Andrews, is a dream of a clarinetist. Now this, this, this concert kind of bookends. We go from 1940s Americana to uh, 1940s Soviet Union at the close of the war with Shostakovich 9, um, which we're going to uh, see on the video blog, uh, David rehearsing it with, with you all in a bit. Um, tell me your thoughts about the Shostakovich 9. The interesting thing about the Shostakovich is that it was written as a celebration of the, the end of World War II and the Soviet triumph. And strangely enough, uh, I think a few months after he wrote it, it was actually censored because the Soviet government decided that its content was too frivolous and lighthearted and not, not showing, you know, I guess the, the typical Russian deep suffering and it's more a little bit funny and sarcastic and, mm. and wonderful. It's more like Shostakovich. It's more like Shostakovich, <laughs> exactly, yes. Thank you, Dana. We look forward to it. Me too. Thank you. David Robertson has graciously allowed me to shoot from the stage, and so you are going to hear Shostakovich 9.